Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. It is the weekend, but a bunch of stuff just went viral on social media. So I'm here to spill the tea. So if you guys remember, I think it was like two months ago, I had reported on Little Tay. There was that whole death hoax that went viral on social media. And, you know, it was sad because we hadn't heard anything from Little Tay in over five years. And it's sad anytime you hear, quote unquote, the death of a young person, right? Then we find out it was a hoax that Little Tay was not dead at all. And I was pissed. And so I had made the whole video talking about that situation. And so then the other day, this was back on September 27th, um, Little Tay was seen for the first time in real life in years. And so she was seen at an um, airport. She had on like a face mask. It was just really weird. The paparazzi was there and they took pictures of her at LAX. So I didn't think too much of it. I'm like, okay, whatever, child. So now today, Little Tay is trending all over Twitter. She basically reactivated her Instagram account and she went on to post her new pop single, okay? So she took to Instagram and she says, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, link in the bio. Y'all bitches thought the show was over. Sucker for Green out now. And she dropped a snippet to her new music video. Y'all go ahead and check this out right here. I'm just sucking through ya. You see my Medusa. All right, so y'all just saw a snippet of the video. So I, like so many people on social media, were shocked as hell. But that's not all. She also took to social media and posted this picture. And she says, my abusive, racist, misogynistic, woman-beating father faked my death, Christopher J. Hope. Basically blasting her dad. And then she started doing like a story time where she's talking about the abuse that she went through and, you know, just a bunch of things that happened with her parents. And she also started playing the piano. This is a whole different side of Little Tay. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Five years and y'all still broke. The go is back. Five years and I'm still the youngest one out. Five years and y'all bitches are still broke. So don't take it out on me. Why the fuck are y'all coming at me for? Y'all hating ass bitches were hating on me when I was nine years old. Talking all this shit when you don't fucking know me. So stop fucking talking. You did not come up. You had five years to come up and you didn't. So don't blame me, bitch. Five years. That being said, let's just get the fuck into it because I have a lot of shit to say. This, this is his Craigslist email to a random woman who had an ad. Okay, this is the email trying to hook up with people. This is my mom talking to somebody about it after she found out about it. It's fucking crazy, but out of all of the random ass women that came and went, mostly Asian women, cause he has an Asian fetish if you didn't know, only one of them is prominent. And this is where Honey Hope comes into the story. So Honey Hope, she is Christopher John Hope's wife currently. And he met her online when she was living in the Philippines. And she is a career scammer. When she was living in the Philippines, she was scamming a career which I will get into later oh this is her that's her right there that's her and Chris these are the receipts these are, this is just one of her victims this is online all he wants to do is hook up with women online but they start having a bond and he wanted to fly her to Canada, which is exactly what happened. And she left the father of her son to be with Chris because she thought that he would provide her with a luxurious good life and bring her to Canada and all that. Just... 
And then things just went fucking downhill from there after she entered my life. When I was living with them, like I said, they were still doing the most out of pocket sexual shit in front of me. She would get out of the shower and she wouldn't even put clothes on. So you guys have just seen those videos. So little Tay went from being the youngest flexor of the century to now being, I guess, a bootleg pop star. It's very interesting to me, and I'll say this, because um, a lot of people are sending me this story wanting to know my opinion. First and foremost, I'm very shocked at the people who were commenting on her body. They're like, oh my gosh, her, where did she get this body from? Her body looks good. Oh my gosh, did she get plastic surgery? And I'm like, have we, are we that far removed from realizing that people go through puberty? When she was viral on social media, this little girl was nine years old. She was between the ages of nine and 10. You already know what it is. Lil Tay, the youngest flex of the century. I'm only nine years old, but I'm richer than all y'all broke ass haters. Lil Tay out here balling in the eye gate. I dropped 200 racks on this car and I'm only nine years old. That's why I never understood why these grown ass rappers like Chief Keef and others were running with her. It's like, this is a nine year old child. She should be in school. You're wearing Gucci from head to toe. Y'all can't afford this shit. This shit costs your whole rent. Oh, baby. Where's Chief Salsa? I'll be wearing new right. fresh Nike. Y'all be wearing cheap ass shit like hand me downs and shit like that. <laughs> so, you know, I know y'all are so used to, you know, BBL bodies and fake bodies and stuff like that. But, you know, between the ages of, I want to say, about 11 to 13, kids go through puberty. So if we haven't seen her in five years, that is where her body came from. She didn't have to go get plastic surgery. She went through puberty. And she's a beautiful girl. She's blossomed really beautifully. But remember, she's still a child, y'all, okay? Slow down a little bit on that. It's like I'm just seeing people just picking her body apart, and it's just weird. It's like she's still a kid. But um, she does look good. But it, it's just kind of bothersome to me that she or whoever made this fake death rumor. Now, she's saying that it was her father. I don't believe a word that any of these people say. I think the whole family's batshit crazy. Her mother, her brother, her daddy, they're all crazy as cat shit, in my personal opinion. The fact that her mom came up with this whole scheme to, you know, help create this character and were parading her through, because her mom was a realtor, so they were parading her through these properties that her mom was supposed to be showing. They were all in on, you know, basically cultivating her social media fame. And now we're finding out there's a lot of abuse in the background, which I'm not shocked about. It's still disturbing that they basically launched her new quote unquote career based off of this death hoax. And I definitely think that she had some involvement in that because her singing, this music video, her playing the piano, um, she's obviously somewhat talented. So I believe this was all in the making, you know what I'm saying? And this was a way for her to capitalize off of the death hoax. And I'm also going to say this. Another thing that kind of bothers me that nobody's really talking about is that, you know, young kids of other ethnicities, they can basically perpetuate the worst of black people. Right. So they can act like little ratchet ghetto black girls and talk with a black scent and, you know, perpetuate the worst of black culture. Never catch me. Ain't nobody going to catch me. Did you say the, the, the hoes are laughing? Yep. So the audience are a bunch of hoes. Yeah. And it's celebrated and it's cute and it's spicy when other races do it. And then when they get bored of it, they can just, eh, I'm over it. I'm over the ratchetness. You know, this is who I am. She went from GBE to BTS. I'm like, what the hell is really good? You know what I'm saying? Like, she's literally out here now on her pop star shit. I mean, she's still talking her shit because that's little Tay. 
But the swag and the energy is totally different. And I just think it's sad because, again, when young black girls in the hood just pop like how they pop and that's just how they naturally talk and behave and carry themselves, it's ghetto, it's ratchet, they're drug on social media. They're never able to capitalize off of just who they are naturally. But then when young girls of other races do it, and Tay's not the only one, we have the Woe Vickies, we had the Bad Babies, you know, they're able to capitalize and become millionaires off of these personas and then when they're tired of it they can just go back to being their you know regular selves remember last uh, remember last year and you was talking about that all that stuff on the ground call me on my name oh was oh you was yeah you remember no i don't remember oh now you don't remember let's go take your jacket off let's fight you wanted to fight then fight now but it ain't no beef oh it's beef right now no i'm, I'm telling you there ain't no beef but i'm telling you it is but i'll tell you it ain't Bro, she's scary. Just like Miley Cyrus. Remember, she was like so hip hop and. You know, she was so hood and now she's, you know, I'm just Miley again and I'm just back doing me. So that's the part to me that's just like problematic and bothersome. You know, I'm glad she's okay and she's, you know, finding herself. She's young, so I'm not going to drag her too much. But just peep game. Even people are now saying, oh, she's about to blow Lotto out the water because Lotto just dropped her, you know, single. And now people are comparing Lotto's views to Little Tay's views. Like, you know, Lotto in an hour got this many views and an hour Little Tay got these this many views. She's coming for the rap girls. So it's like, can y'all simmer down? Let the rap girls do them. I don't know, child. I just hope that little Tay is trying to turn a new leaf and is doing better in life. But I'm just not feeling this whole situation. I got to keep it real. But again, I, I leave the, you know, I pose the question off to you guys. How do you guys feel about this situation? Let me know down in the comments below. Are you guys feeling her new song? Are y'all here for, you know, Lil Tay reinventing herself? And how do you guys feel about the allegations that she's levying against her parents and the abuse? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to like and share the video. Most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Enjoy your weekend. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.